Hi and welcome to another episode of the Sleep Nanny podcast. Today I'm joined by Janine McGee. Um, Janine is a nutritionist of Janine McGee Nutrition and she's here to talk to us about all the things that can keep us in good health with our nutrition right from birth through parenthood and beyond. Um, so Janine, welcome to the show. It's so good to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be talking to you. Oh, me too. I can't wait to delve in. But before we do, could you just tell us a little bit about what got you to this place in your career um, and being a nutritionist in this way? Like, I would love to know a little, little bit about your story. Okay, sure. So my health wasn't always what it is now. Um, in fact, most people question how on earth I got into nutrition when they know what I used to eat. Um, but to summarise, basically back in my 20s, I was going through severe gut issues. I had no end of anxiety. My energy was rock bottom. I was experiencing PMS beyond belief, periods that left me crippled over in pain to the point I actually passed out at work once, which mm. was highly embarrassing. Um, trips to the doctor basically just led, left me being given one pill after another, which only gave me more symptoms. And it got to the point where I was like, I can't do this anymore. I just cannot. I need to take my health into my own hands. And I stumbled across nutritional therapy on Google and did everything that I tell my clients not to do and started Googling and putting all the pieces together started implementing some of the things that I'd read about and it worked and I started feeling better and better at the time I was in a career that I hated accounts and I was like I know there are going to be other women out there like me that are dealing with one issue after another and just not feeling well so I retrained went and studied at the College of Naturopathic Medicine in Brighton and graduated when I was eight months pregnant with my son. Knew that that possibly wasn't the best time to be setting up a business. So took some maternity leave and then started practicing when he was one. Mm. And yeah, I now spend most of my days helping women that are battling low energy. I do a lot of work with new mums. Um, because, well, we all know that when you become a mum, your energy levels are zapped. And yeah, just help mums find themselves again, really, using food. I love that. I love that. And it's such a difficult time. I, I guess going into this profession as a new mum, you know, that stage in life as well, it probably um, just really fitted nicely. Oh, definitely. You. And definitely. Then to be able to then help mums now that you know what they're going through, you know what they're feeling. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure just like in the world of sleep, you're forever finding new you know, people that you can help at different stages and in different phases. Definitely. Um, so I remember the new mom stage and <laughs> feeling of being depleted. And we, everyone listening to this podcast knows that sleep is a big issue and that that, that can leave us feeling yeah. quite exhausted. And that's quite often where our listeners come from. Um, but talk to us a little bit about the nutrition aspect of this and how it plays a role. Okay, so one of the first things that I'll ask a new mum when we start talking is, talk me through your day. What, what sort of things are you eating? And typically it will be the coffee and cake diet because that's all you do, isn't it? Meet up with your mum friends and we're going to go and get a coffee and a slice of cake. Yeah. And I'll sort of talk them through ways that they can switch that up a bit. And believe it or not, one of the first things that I tell people to actually lose is the caffeine. So for the simple reason that caffeine basically spikes your cortisol stress hormone. And when our cortisol levels are spiked, our insulin levels then try and meet it they almost have this little bit of a battle with each other and when our insulin levels are high they've got to come down so when they come crashing you then feel totally zapped so by removing coffee you're already making that little tweak into having sustainable energy 
which is counterintuitive when people think oh well I need the coffee so that I feel the energy but actually opposite absolutely Mm. um you know we'll talk about one of the first things they do in the morning you know a lot of new mums will sit in bed understandably you know you're either breastfeeding or feeding with a bottle you're exhausted from the night before because you've been up so many times the curtains stay closed and you know I'm sure you have these conversations with you know your clients about making sure that the first thing you do is actually opening the curtains get some light on your face you'd be amazed at what difference that makes to your energy levels so it's not all from a food point you know looking at the amount of protein that you're getting into your diet again protein plays a big part in both our energy production it plays a big part in blood sugar management as well and when our blood sugar is on this roller coaster which it naturally is when we're in a sleep deprived broken state incorporating protein with every single meal every single snack makes a humongous difference you know and it doesn't need to be a lot of people think that they need to overcomplicate nutrition. And because I work with mums, because I started my business when I was in that sort of sleep deprived state, I knew I needed food that was going to fuel me. I know my clients need food that's going to fuel them. And it needs to be quick. It needs to be a, a meal that you can make in five, 10 minutes. It needs to be something you can eat one handed if you're holding a baby. And it needs to be something that you're, you can just eat that's going to fill you up and keep you functioning Mm. so you know I often get people to make up their own smoothie bags that they can keep in the freezer you know you if you chop everything up stick it in a bag in the freezer you've got an entire week's worth of breakfast that you can chuck in a blender and it's done in two minutes Mm. you know and I often get clients to incorporate a healthy protein powder there are some there's a lot of junk out there but one of the my go-to brands is by a company called form that's f-o-r-m nutrition you can find them on instagram or if you just google form nutrition they'll pop up on google um adding a couple of tablespoons of that into a nourishing smoothie you've got your protein here you've got your vitamins you've got your minerals and you're good to go And you can drink that on the go. You know, if you're running late to a baby class or a toddler group or something, you've got something that you can have within an hour or two of waking up that's actually going to do what it needs to rather than grabbing a slice of toast or having a cup of tea followed by a coffee chaser first thing in the morning to get you going. That smoothie is going to do so much more for you than having a quick and easy or skipping breakfast. Um, or doing something like an overnight oats you can make that up the night before you can get your partner to make it up for you it really is so simple it's just chucking some oats in a bowl adding either protein powder or um, you know a nut butter so that you've got the protein in there topping it up with milk chuck some frozen berries in stick it in the fridge and again you've got breakfast and you can even batch do those because they'll keep for three or four days so you can make it all up in one go. It takes you five minutes. It's done, ready to go. Mm. Um, you know, when, then we'll look at sort of lunch and or main meal options. And one of my sort of main main pieces of advice here is cook once, eat at least twice. So whatever you're making, double up on it. You know, double up on things like curries, chilies, spag bowls, because they will feed you several times that week. You know, it, you don't need to be in the kitchen constantly to eat well. And that's where a lot of people sort of get in, get in their own heads thinking that they can't do it because it's, it's too time consuming whilst they're looking after young, young kids. You know, or even if you've got a partner around at the weekend, you know, take some time away from Litland if you can and go and get some cooking done. Or better yet, get your partner to go and do it. Um, (laughs) so you know there are ways around it and by adding in the foods that are going to support you if you take one thing from this podcast today protein with every meal 
every snack and it will make a big difference. Um, you know, if you're vegetarian or vegan, then making sure that you're getting the beans and pulses in with each meal and, you know, beans and pulses and, you know, things like oats, nuts, seeds, they're all really great for breast milk production too, if you're breastfeeding. And if you're topping up with protein, again, you're nourishing your body from a cellular level, which will enable and support your body to produce the milk that it needs to. Um, and yeah, give you that sustained energy to keep going. Yeah. Do you know, these are, this is all great for me too. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> not just, just, not just new mums, but I'm thinking like busy, busy business owners. Yeah. That's, you know, cause, um, I'm not going to lie. I, I get times where I go, Oh, just, I'm too busy. And I do that thing where it's, um, I'm, I am a health, I, I make healthy choices and anyone yeah. that knows me would say, you, you, you eat healthily, but yes, but sometimes it's nothing because I, because I'm like, Busy. oh, there's nothing healthy to hand, so I'll go without. And that's yeah. not good. And, you no. know, and then I'm lacking in, in nutrients. So, and then I have occasionally got stuck in the toast and a coffee thing, especially in a winter morning. Yeah. It doesn't tend to happen in summer. But like this, I, I can see how new mums especially yeah. really need this to restore. Um, yes. And to re-energize, especially when you're, that's down anyway, and with that lack of time um, and yeah. hands free to to get this stuff done, but certainly tips that you can carry right on through. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And you know, a lot of these things are things that I'll talk about with clients with older children as well. That you know, again, have either gone back to work or mm. they're self-employed. A lot of my clients are business owners mm. um, at, that are just pushed for time. I think don't, no one. No one really tells you how much your life is going to change from a time perspective when you become a mum. You know, I'm regularly having a conversation with my husband about what I wouldn't give to go and live two weeks in my previous life and almost slap myself about how much time I didn't think I had. Um, And it's just coming up with these little hacks that just make your life easier day to day. Um, I will always get people to make sure that they've got things in their cupboards and freezers where they can throw a meal together without needing to go and buy everything fresh. So on those days where you open the cupboards, it's like, oh, what am I going to make? I haven't been to the shops because, you know, baby was screaming or work got busy or, you know, life happened. If you've always got the store cupboard essentials in, you can throw a meal together. You know, one of my go-tos is to make sure that I've always got you know, the micro packs of brown rice. Yeah. You know, yes, absolutely. Cooking rice from scratch, 100% the best thing that you can do. And no, we shouldn't be relying on packet foods. But sometimes there's a need for that. Yeah. Um, And, you know, there's no shame in that. So having those to hand, I'll always have some like tinned mackerel, which is really high in omega-3, which again is so crucial for postnatal brain mental health um you know that's always in my cupboard I'll have tins of those in my freezer I'll have frozen chopped spinach frozen chopped courgette frozen pork peppers frozen chopped onions it's all ready for me and I will throw them into a like pan stir fry them up chuck in the tin of mackerel chuck in the tin of rice and again you've got a meal in 10 minutes that's brilliant I need you to literally give me this (laughs) I'm not a cook if you hadn't guessed um so yeah I I'm taking I'm taking notes here today I really I really really like that and it's it, it's that speed it's the efficiency but it's the nutrition and it's yes. also I suppose in you'll get families and I suppose more and more now where people have got different dietary preferences yep. and it's difficult to make one meal for all the family yes. um and you know you rather than making people eat what they don't want or feeling like oh I'm gonna have to have that because that's what's being cooked for me yeah you can actually take control of your own what you yes. put in your own body and absolutely our bodies are different too right just because yeah. my husband eats one thing and that might serve him it may not serve me and my body needs other things so 
you produce totally different levels of hormones to your husband. You absolutely need different foods to him. Now, that's not to say that you can't share a meal together, but it doesn't mean that every meal has to be the same. Mm. And it doesn't mean that you can't add specific things to his plate and specific things to yours without having to make two different meals. Yeah, yeah. Right, I'm going to have to get you to be my permanent chef. No, I'm joking. Um, but the, the, um... It wouldn't have been the first time someone's requested that. <laughs> I, no, it's just music to my ears because you are really making healthy nutrition sound very, very doable. Oh, um, it, Honestly, it's one of the biggest things that I advocate is that yeah. nutrition doesn't have to be complicated. You know, I see so many people in my industry overcomplicating it with add this superfood in and add this other powder that no one can read, no one can pronounce. And that's the only thing that's going to make you healthy. No, it's absolutely not. It's let's go back to basics yeah. and eat real food yeah. that we can throw together in minutes and know that it's actually serving us. Yeah. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect. It just needs to be food that's going to nourish you and make you feel better than you did yesterday and if every day you're focusing on feeling better than you did yesterday you'll be amazed at how quickly you can feel incredible what are the best healthy snacks because let's face it there are times when we're stuck somewhere the kind of thing you can throw in your handbag so that you know you're not caught out you're not stuck in a oh my god I'm so hungry and reaching for the nearest packet of crisps like what what are because there are so many yeah. power bars and things yes. that you see on the shelves now and it's re- it's a minefield reading like okay well there's much sugar there's this much fat well that one's lower in this and uh, yeah. and then it's definitely covered it's covered in chocolate so huh. like yeah uh, what is good and what is not so one of my sort of go-tos when I'm telling people to look at like the shop bought snacks is Read the ingredients. If there's anything on there that you can't read or pronounce, put it back. You don't want it. If it contains artificial sweeteners, uh, particularly aspartame or sucralose, put it back um, because it will do nothing for your gut, nothing for your hormones and nothing for your health. My only exception with sweeteners is stevia. But again, making sure it's a natural version and not um a synthetic version of it when it comes to healthy shop bought bars i particularly like the kind bars i don't know if you've heard of those they are relatively low sugar um or most of them are and they contain a reasonable amount of protein predominantly sort of nuts and seeds and they're not sweetened with junk they do one of my favorites is a sea salted caramel flavor and it's flavored with um just completely natural nothing on there that you wouldn't have heard of so yeah it's amazing um i also really like it's a local business to us actually as we discovered that we live that quite close to each other there's a company called nutritional nosh um she is She's just lovely. Katie, um, she's someone that I often say to new mums, order from her. She's going to send you a big pack of homemade energy balls that she makes in her own kitchen. They're made with just dates, nuts, seeds, um, sometimes essential oils, nothing nasty in them. And they are the best energy balls you will have ever had. Um, Ooh, I've got to get some of those. But yeah, she's based in Winchester. Amazing. But she posts, so it doesn't matter if you're not local, then she will post out to you. And they're often so if if ever I know someone that's pregnant and expecting, I'll always order them some because they're quite handy to have next to you when you're in that recovery stage and you just want something sweet but you don't want to impact your health. Yeah. Um so yeah, they're great to take out. Even a simple piece of fruit and a little pot of nuts to keep in your bag. Because then you're getting something, the sweetness from the fruit, you're pairing it with a bit of protein and fats from the nuts. So you're not going to have that sugar impact. And that will keep you full to your next meal because you're pairing the fruit with the protein. So again, a lot of people think that by just snacking on fruit alone, they're, you know, they're eating fruit. Of course, it's healthy. 
But because they're not pairing it with the protein, it again can lead to that sort of sugar spike yeah. feeling and that hunger crash an hour or so later. But if you pair it with nut seeds, um, Pip and Nut do these little, well, they always used to, I think you can still buy them from some shops, little sachets of almond butter or cashew butter. I used to always keep loads of those in my bag because if ever I had that, I just need something to eat now. You could have that sort of instant hit of protein and it would do what it needed to. It would give you that energy boost. Um, even taking like just a little pot of protein powder that you can then shake up with some water, taking a bottle of water, don't make it up before you go because it will go vile and rancid, but mm. taking a little pot of protein powder, mixing that with some water and having that with a handful of berries whilst you're on the go. Again, you've got that, I can do this one-handed, I'm just having you know a shake, a couple of bits of, couple of, bits of berries so that you're actually getting some fresh food in there with the vitamins and minerals, and it's something you can take on the go with you. Yeah interestingly we were saying there about fruit and pairing yep. it with the nuts i really like and would love to know more actually about pairing things because some foods are not so good for you on their own but they are good for you with there are yep. foods like that aren't there like there are certain fruits that i feel really sensitive to um yep. and i bloat really badly like even watermelon which i adore i i just will massively bloat and and have like got discomfort um but I'm curious as to whether it's the acidity and then maybe the nuts or seeds can alkalinize it or is that is that I'm making there's a big up. possibility it'd be worth an experiment um watermelon with feta cheese if you're fine with dairy can be a really nice combination and don't knock it till you've tried it okay <laughs> I can, but I do think I am dairy sensitive, but I can, I can handle a bit of cheese. So I'll, yeah, I might try it. You might find a lot of people that have a dairy in um, sensitivity find that they do better with goat's cheese and feta yeah. comes under that goat's cheese. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Goat's cheese I'm fine. Um, um, and yeah. I like. yeah. But yeah, the reason for that is that cow's dairy contains a protein strain called A1 casein. And that's commonly linked with bloating, yeah. um, skin issues such as eczema, psoriasis, yeah. um, or that itchy skin, but no real rash with it. Mm -hmm. Also got a big link with PMS, um, polycystic ovaries, hormonal acne. So a lot of my clients, I tend to take dairy out yeah. for that reason, because I do a lot of that hormone balancing side of things. But if you can tolerate it, then goat, uh, goat's cheese is yeah. usually fine. So things like goat, well, goat's cheese, feta, halloumi, yeah. most people are usually okay with that because that contains A2 casein rather than A1 and it's slightly less inflammatory. So that's still classed as dairy, but not yes. cow's dairy. Is there any benefit to cow's dairy at all? Because I see it as like one of the world's biggest no-no's. <laughs> But I don't have the science to back that. I just, I just think, what, you what could is there? That's argue <laughs> that from a calcium point, it's a great one. Um, if you can absorb it, if it doesn't make you bloat, if it doesn't bring you out. Hmm. But I am quite an anti-dairy person, and most of my clients will. I always say to people, if you're not prepared to give up dairy, I'm probably not the right nutritionist for you. Um, there are so many other foods that you can get calcium from yeah, yeah, and it's not actually the calcium that's from dairy is not actually the best form of calcium so you don't really absorb as much as so the, it has um, no use not really <laughs> We should just let's just claim that one now there's no point in cow's dairy anymore <laughs> no I will caveat that though with it doesn't mean that just walking down the free from aisle and grabbing anything that mm. says dairy free no. makes it healthy no no and I think that's that's the other misconception isn't it that yeah. you know suddenly we're going to take these things out but we're actually replacing it with well with what and so yeah 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 
but it's, yeah, it, there is there's only one dairy free milk brand that I will recommend, uh, which is Plenish. Um, and the only reason for that is because their ingredients are simply oats or almonds or coconut and water. Amazing. If you look at any of the other dairy free brands, when you look at their ingredients, it's full of seed oils, which is a big inflammatory. Um, they're usually full of fillers, um, additives. They've used sometimes they'll add the um, synthetic forms of all of the nutrients and then you know clever marketing and all that they'll put it on there this contains mm. but not in a form that's going to make you feel good and I often see so I'll speak to a lot of mums with kids that have got dairy intolerances and they'll say oh I've been advised to use um, a certain barista milk which you know I'm not going to name and shame yeah. um, <laughs> because it contains the vitamins and I'll sort of hang my head in, in shame a little bit and be like, uh, it does. But what it's got in there is probably going to bring your, your child out in a rash as well because it's, it contains all of the synthetic stuff. Um, and for a lot of kids with a dairy intolerance, when it comes to swapping out their milks, I will say, actually, what I would do is buy a carton of Plenish order a calcium supplement in a capsule open it up pour it in the milk shake it and then you'll have a milk that contains more calcium than cow's milk mm. um so that the kids are still getting what they need for healthy sort of bone development and everything else but you're not then pumping them full of one thing that makes them feel like horrendous yeah. and then full of something else that's going to do exactly the same yeah that's a really good idea then for i suppose for following on from breastfeeding um, yeah, I remember when my two were little and it, the normality was when once you finished with you know, breast milk or formula yeah. or whatever you're doing, um, it was to go on to cows. And yeah. I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to give them that. Like I didn't have it in my diet. And I was like, I don't know if I want to give them that. But then the follow on formulas were what people called the equivalent of fast food. And yeah. I was like, but wait, uh, and then it was like, which, which do I do? I know one was a lot less expensive than the other, but um, it, again, when you're in that place, I would have loved to have had somebody tell me back then, well, these are the pros and the cons and here's another option. Yeah. Um, because I felt like I was just stuck between you know, two evils. <laughs> like which yes. one do I pick? Luckily, both of my children, quite at quite an early age went yeah I don't really want this thanks and they're, they're like great water drinkers um but the thing is if they're getting yeah. calcium from other sources in their diet which is very easily done you know if if they're children that will eat greens you know or even mm, if they're not yeah. you can hide them in everything you yeah. really can um you know one of my children will eat anything that I put in front of him nice. and the other one really won't which as I'm sure you can imagine absolutely kills me in my line of work yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah there are so many ways that you can get greens in even adding like a nut butter so with your kids if they have you know toast for breakfast adding a nut butter on the top that gives mm -hmm. it's a great source of calcium um adding things like hummus so it's one it's a meal that my kids love I will make up some pasta and instead of using a sort of you know pasta sauce I'll stick a third of a pot of hummus over it as the pasta sauce and that again is a really great way of getting calcium in mm. um and they love it um things like tahini you can hide that in pretty much everything that's a great source of calcium um, beans pulses yeah. so there are so many ways to get the calcium in without having to use dairy if you've got an intolerance um, and it's just being mindful of you know if they can tolerate dairy at a young age would I put it in yes if they were fussy and wouldn't eat other things but if not then if they're getting calcium elsewhere in their diet great yeah it's everything they need yeah 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 this um, yeah more people need to know this and understand this because I think we're I think we're still following very old-fashioned yes information 
would that is that true or is that just because I'm now in my 40s and my children are preteen <laughs> but it does no. seem like that we don't have enough of this information no yeah. definitely not definitely not and there's so much so much noise out there and so much scaremongering Mm. with you know you need to be giving this x or xyz um you know you can't get through your day without xyz and you know equally with the kids that are dairy intolerant you know again we're seeing more and more dairy intolerant intolerant children and adults like why aren't we doing research on this to ascertain exactly what's going on Mm. so yeah there's a lot of outdated information out there are there more intolerances generally these days than there used to be or are we just more aware of them like are they a bit of both I think yeah well no in fact there are more intolerances and I think a lot of that stems from quick farming Mm. um the way that food is grown the Mm. pesticide use so in some ways, it's not necessarily an intolerance. It's what's been put on your food that's making you have that reaction. Yeah. Um, when you factor in stress as well, that has a huge impact on the gut. Yeah. And if, if the gut's not functioning at optimal level, of course, you're going to react to things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's always worth exploring But again, what I will say is there are so many um, Groupon food intolerance tests out there. (laughs) Please don't buy one. You'll be wasting your money. If there's a potential gut issue, you need to be looking at doing a stool test rather than doing an intolerance test. Because if you do an intolerance test when there's a gut issue, it will flag up so many things that you are potentially not intolerant to. It's just that you haven't got the right bacteria in your gut. Oh, I always said if they don't take your poop, then it can't be a true, you know, yeah. you're not getting a true test. And I remember years ago, my husband did one, um, a fairly one of these home kit things. And yeah, I was like, oh, well, I, I'm, I need to go gluten free and this and that and the other. And actually, it, like you say, it probably wasn't that. It probably was just whatever an imbalance that day was. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah and and sometimes well I mean he's learned a lot just through trial and error and eliminating and putting back in things um but yeah I'm yeah definitely the gut health is an area that really fascinates me and I think it's really it can be I, I imagine life-changing to actually oh, understand is. like what just something in your in your gut can shift everything from your yeah. mood your brain your energy your everything um definitely there's a huge connection huge mm. connection um you know even down to a hormone point our gut's mm. where we metabolize our hormones so if you're someone that's dealing with sort of postnatal increased pms and you're also suffering with bloating or you know ibs style symptoms chances are your gut is linked to why you're getting the pms and hormonal issues yeah you know, from an anxiety point, um, again, big, big gut connection, because if your gut isn't absorbing what you're putting in, you're not nourishing yourself at a cellular level to to support your mental health. Mm. You know, you're not you're not giving the cells what they need to keep you on an even keel. Yeah, which is all the more important when you've just had a baby. Yes. And you're going through yes. all those hormonal changes anyway. Yeah. Um, everything feels like it's in the air. You're sleep deprived, so you're not operating from the most rational brain space no. anyway. Um, and yeah, a simple thing like putting the right stuff in. Yes. Can make it so much better. I find this so fascinating. <laughs> I what... could talk about this for hours. So. <laughs> yeah, no, so could I, so could I. I'm thinking like for our our mums out there and dads um but I know we do have a lot of mums um who are either in the new mum stage or yeah. maybe the little ones are a bit bigger now but they're still struggling yeah. like how well how long can we expect that to go on and how it, it, this isn't all just for the brand new baby stage no is no like, definitely it's not like, it's definitely not so there is 
the latest research indicates that you can suffer with something called postnatal depletion for up to 10 years wow. post-birth, oh my which when you think about it is actually quite a scary, scary fact. Yeah. Um, and I see a lot of people questioning whether they are going into that perimenopausal phase when actually it's just their body crying out from out to them saying I haven't actually recovered properly yet can you fill me back up with what I need um and it's sort of looking at those nutrient deficiencies um if if you haven't had your blood work checked with your GP recently you know go in and you're feeling burnt out tired broken you know especially pre-period go and get at the bare minimum vitamin d iron b12 and your thyroid checked and make sure that they are well within range and if any of them are not you could still be suffering with postnatal depletion Mm. um you know and again it's sort of looking at your overall diet with no judgment um you know like i said earlier most people question how on earth i got into this line of work if they knew what i used to eat you know if your diet isn't packed full of protein if it's not packed full of vegetables fruit whole grains something will be missing you will be deficient in something um so start exploring that you know potentially consider taking a supplement again please don't buy anything off the shelf um i always say to everyone my inbox is always open supplements is something that i am very very fussy on for a reason Uh, i don't want anyone wasting their money and there are only sort of a few select brands that I will recommend for that reason, but making sure that you're topping up um, to just get yourself out of that. Focusing on things like omega threes is crucial for brain health. It's crucial for immune system. It's crucial for energy levels. It's crucial for hormone health. If you don't eat at least two to three portions of oily fish a week, you need to be supplementing especially if you're in that burnout phase. Um, And, you know, yes, you can get omega-3 from a vegan source, things like walnuts, chia seeds, flax seeds, but you won't get anywhere near the levels that your body actually needs. Mm. So that's, again, no judgment on um, any vegan, vegetarian or someone that doesn't like fish. It just means that you need to be topping up to get the levels that you need. Mm. And that's the thing we can, like you say, we can top up and it. it there, yes. there are going to be foods that people go, oh my God, I just really don't like that. I yep. can't eat that. But it's like, it's okay. You can get, you can still get the nutrients in your system. And yes, um, I, I imagine there are potential further out to longer term health consequences of not, yes. which, you know, it's only in hindsight that then we go, oh, for years, I wasn't yep. getting that in my diet. <clears throat> and if I was, I could have prevented yes yeah definitely you know if you don't if you don't look after yourself postnatally when it comes to perimenopause when it comes to menopause Mm. it will likely hit you hard Mm. and I always say to people prevention is easier than cure yes and if you can start looking after yourself now it will serve you later on and you know one of the things I hear from especially mums yeah is that I feel guilty putting me first because I now have to put someone else first. And what I would say to that is, when you start prioritising yourself, everybody around you gets the best of you. Yeah. If you are permanently running from an exhausted state, they won't be getting the best of you. And... You know, one thing, you know, I won't lie, there are moments where I have major mum guilt, major mum guilt. We all do. Thinking, you know, oh, I feel guilty. You know, you've been playing by yourself and now I want to do this. But I know that if I don't do it, they're not going to get the best out of me Mm. later on in the day. Um, You know, and equally, I want them growing up to know that looking after themselves isn't selfish Mm -hmm. it's a necessity yeah looking after their health doesn't make them a bad person all you're doing is teaching them 
that their health is the best thing in their life. It's crazy that we still default to that as mums, yeah. especially like you said, it's not just mums, but particularly is like, especially why we default this me last yep. mentality. And I'm sure it's a learned thing generation oh, of course after it is. generation, you know, of course I know my mum was like that. And I have yep. moments when I'm like that, like we, we default to it, even though I'm sure intellectually we understand the whole analogy of fitting our own mask before helping others yep. and so on. Like, and we talk about that more and more now, but yet we still slip back into those uh, habits of putting ourselves last. And you now I've got a daughter who is currently, as we record this, she's 11. And in the past couple of years, she has said words to the effect of, um, something around the line along the lines of looking after myself and going no yeah. you you need to be first it was it, she kind of tried to question like to trick me I think and was like in <laughs> if this then you know what would you and it's like no you need to look after you first and and it's it's like oh yeah thanks thanks for the reminder <laughs> and it's like, maybe they're learning this you know yeah uh, maybe well, the hopefully. next generation will get this right but it is so true and also and like we were just talking about how later in life the effects of I talk about this with sleep and I'm sure you know nutrition is the same that if we don't take care of these things it's it might not have obvious impact right now but way yeah. down the line you go oh no and what use are you to those people around you then or or yes. say it cuts your life shorter like yeah. that that's not what you want and no. I think the we've we've got to change that narrative especially as women yes that we don't have to put ourselves at the bottom of the pile and we'll not don't have to that we mustn't we actually mustn't yeah um it's yeah you know really it's hard mm. you know and again one of the sort of simple tools that I get people to do when when they're in that mindset of I can't do that because that's selfish and everyone else needs me <laughs> is to actually practice saying no mm. and even down to really simple things like when someone says do you want a cup of tea if you're not desperate for that cup of tea, mm. practice saying no. Mm. Yeah. You know, when someone offers you, you know, do you want a biscuit? Mm. If you really don't want it and you're just saying yes to be polite, say no. They're simple little things. And the more you practice saying no, the easier it gets. You're so right. Because when I was in that new mum stage and yeah. you know meeting up the you know, at people's houses or wherever and it was like oh we're there's two or three mums we're gonna get together and we gonna come out here and everyone would always buy the obligatory snaps <laughs> pack of biscuits, box of <laughs> yeah, cakes. yeah exactly <laughs> I honestly never had any of that I genuinely hand on heart never did and I yeah. was the odd one out I will say that I was yeah. the odd ball I was the one that would just have some water and I'd be like I'm fine no I'm good thanks because it was almost who I was was somebody yeah. who did not eat that and yeah. that wasn't done in any I'm better than anyone else or snobbery kind of way it no. was just my default setting was no no thanks no I'm good I, I no I'm all right and I just it was a habit I didn't yeah. actually even question whether I wanted it or not probably I probably didn't because I just never yeah it was just how it was yeah but, I'd probably be more inclined to say yes now than I was back then. Um, but that again, it's habit, isn't it? It is, yeah. and that's so. What you're saying about practicing is so true. It's so yeah. so true, and it's about identity, definitely. And, and who you, who you're going to step into becoming? Yes, definitely. You know, and again, another little sort of tip for people that think that they don't have time to mm. do anything for themselves. How often do you put the kettle on and then go, right, what can I get done while the kettle's boiling? Can I undo the dishwasher? Can I put the washing on? Can I do this? Can I do this? Can I do this? And you almost set yourself a little challenge to get as much done as you can in two minutes. The next time you put the kettle on, I want you to stand there and breathe. And spend two minutes breathing in for four, holding for four and out for four. And I can guarantee you, you will feel better than what you did yeah. had you done the dishwasher, had you put the washing out, or had you done something else. It's euphoric, isn't it? Breathing. Yeah. <laughs> and just getting that sort of two to three minutes of space for you will change everything. Yet that dishwasher could have been done later. Yeah. 
the washing could be done later. The housework can be done later. That time for you, you will never get back. Mm. So just taking those two minutes, you know, if finding half an hour for you or 15 minutes for you seems like too much at the moment, Mm. just do it when you're putting the kettle on. Yeah. Yeah. That's so simple. Everyone can do that. Yeah. Like you said, everyone can do that and it's a start. Yeah. And as long as each week you're improving that, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how small those steps are in the right direction, as long as they are in the right direction. And then it goes from once a day to yes, several times a day to extended. And yes. Yeah. Oh, well, we could definitely do this all day long. Yes. Um, I, have <laughs> I feel like we're almost going to need another session to go over are. the next steps. <laughs> I, think, I think we are. I think we should arrange a part two for another yes. time for sure. Is there anything, Janine, you want to share sort of in summary? I mean, that was a really good, actually poignant thing um, right there. Um, is there anything else before we wrap up that you feel um, is a must share thing today? Um, like I said earlier, the if you take one thing from today, look at the protein that you're getting in your diet and you should probably increase it. If mm. you're, it's making sure that you're getting protein with every single meal, every single snack from an energy level point and it will change everything. That is, that is going in the notes. That is going on a poster <laughs> on the fridge. Um, that's brilliant that's absolutely brilliant thank you and those snacks that we reach for that are empty you know empty calories um need to change definitely so so good like thank you a million for coming on the show oh you're so welcome honestly i could talk about this stuff for hours (laughs) hours we will and we will (laughs) (laughs) um but this has just been so helpful i hope everybody listening has taken some you know, golden nuggets of wisdom today um that are going to lead towards better health and vitality for the whole family um janine where can our listeners find out more about you and what you do so it's best to reach me on either instagram or facebook and if you just search for janine mcgee nutrition you will find me and we'll put the link in the show notes as well to make that super easy well once again thank you so much and we'll definitely be having you back you're so welcome thank you for having me oh it's a pleasure thank you bye bye just gonna hit